Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. It is of course Wednesday night and uh, a fantastic panel lined up for you this evening. Uh, Morgan Newman unable to join us this evening, but maybe uh, sometimes we must just count our blessings. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> on the panel with me this evening, and let me introduce you to some of our superstars, all of them provincial or national players or coaches at some other stage within the ranks of Western Province Rugby. We'll start off on my far right hand side. Paul Dalport, no stranger to Cape Rugby TV, of course the manager of the and captain and coach of the <laughs> Cape Rugby TV 7 side. How are you, Paulie? Well, Jeff, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, always, always nice to have you. Um, are you are you still breathing a bit? Are you having a bit of a break? Uh, I, I am, yeah. I really, really enjoyed watching the boys play over the weekend in, in Dubai. Uh, but I think, yeah, that intensity was a little bit much for this old body. Eh? Very glad to be sitting on the couch and <laughs> watching. <laughs> and of course, Rito Klongwane, the uh, coach of Primrose. And uh, no stranger to Western Roms Rugby, having having been under the ranks there as well. Are you, Rito? Good, how are you, James? Not too bad, not too bad. I believe you've got some family members watching tonight. So <laughs> yes, yeah, all the way up in Limpopo province. Uh. <laughs> Limpopo province. Uh. <laughs> Closer to home and a man who is right in the heart of uh, Western Rams rugby and no stranger to club rugby, John Dobson. How are you, Jobber? All right, yourself, Jeff? Yeah, no, good. Good, nice to have you on the show again. Thanks very much. Yeah, the last time we had you on the show, we were chatting about your, your, uh, uh, your previous record or what, what was the word I'm looking for uh, of uh, when you were at Northern's Avenue. <laughs> That's over here. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are here. There we are. There we go. Northern's <laughs> in fact, Northern's Avenue, yeah, Northern's yeah, Avenue right jersey is right behind you. Does that look familiar? Did you play in that jersey? No, we had a gold band across there and we drank Castle Courts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Castle Courts. All right, there's, uh, there's things that have obviously moved on from Castle Courts. When three, the men say, he said in the carpets, no, three men up a kiss. We say, how are you with Courts, man? He has three men up a kiss. And then uh, Slatila lost that time with a bounty of a briefcase. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on the show, of course, tonight, coming up a little bit later, we'll take a look at the HSBC H7s in a minute or so, as you heard. Uh, Paulie tell us. Of course, it was local sevens at uh, Camps Bay. It was the Varsity Sports sevens at Camps Bay. It was, uh, turned out very exciting. And then lots of other rugby activity. We know that Western Province Rugby, and we'll speak to Dobbo about that in a sec, had uh, the coaching clinic out at the Institute in Stellenbosch. And Herman Abrams and the rest of the uh, team from the Union managed to do the Christmas party last week at HPC, which was, as always, absolutely great fun. But let's take a look there at um, the HSBC sevens results. Fiji 29-17 over South Africa, New Zealand 17-14 over England, Argentina 21-5 over Wales and then in the final bowl uh, Portugal 12-17 down to Australia and then Spain going down to France in the final shield 28-17. Paul you're the expert in this we might as well turn attention to you. Um, before we get to the, the final match there which was Fiji South Africa, uh, Spain and France um, Spain, I've never thought of them as much of sevens players. Uh, France, we know, pl can play sevens. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. Uh, Spain, de definitely one of the teams that have Im improved immensely over the last couple of years. Um, France also, you know, France, if you, if you catch them on their, on, on their day when they feel like playing and they're on fire, they're very, very difficult to beat, but they have, have been very inconsistent over the last couple of seasons. Uh, I think that's the, that's the beauty of, of sevens, that the, the, you know, the so-called minnows actually can actually develop rugby in terms of their sevens because they get to play against better opposition every week you know there's no real there's no curry cup or super rugby that the spanish guys can play in um so the sevens is a great platform for them for them to develop themselves are you telling me that france is doing the same nonsense that they do in 15 man rugby they're doing it on the sevens field that they decide to play when they want to play <laughs> Yeah, Shem, I don't want to get in trouble with any of the Frenchies. Uh, but they, they're, they're far away. But uh, yeah, you know, they've got some absolutely in incredible players. And I think they, they, they really un understand the game well. Uh, but I think that's just the nature of sevens nowadays. It's the, the way sevens has gone, you know, say three or four years ago, there were four teams that could win a tournament. Now there are eight teams that could win well, a tournament. Well, it's interesting that you say that because, I mean, if you look at the re result there, Portugal, who I've never really... The last time I saw Portugal play was in Gala Shields in 99 in the World Cup. Um, and uh, I think there was about 14 people around the south of the field and maybe 14 people even on the, t on the team. And yet they come out and they lose only by five points against Australia, who is supposed yeah. to be... Uh, ranked what I think number one at the moment in, yeah. in the world rankings in sevens. Yeah, I mean the Australians played in the they played in the final in Gold Coast uh, in October, yeah. and then they played in the Shield in in Dubai, yeah. and that's the, the that's the nature of sevens at the moment. As so you said, yeah. I think if you if you get your bets right, you can uh, end up making a lot of money on sevens. 
Of course, the other team that's been doing really well, uh, and there's testimony probably to the fact that they've had so much more rugby exposure, is Argentina. Dolo, we turn to you, 21-5 against Wales. I mean, Wales is a team that's really good. They, they, they should have no excuse, and they go and lose against Argentina. Uh, Argentina getting better and better. Yeah, I think um, they've benefited a lot from being part of the Vodacom Cup as the pumpers of the last few years. A lot of those guys, I think 11 of them played in the World Cup. Uh, that's, that gives them a professional team based on Argentina. And as Paul says, that's where a lot of the sevens guys come from. And there's a hell of a close relationship between South Africa and Argentina, which goes back years. A lot of coaches going over there, so I think they're benefiting from that. Yeah, and of course, um, a lot of the Argentinian players are playing uh, in, in, in uh, France or, or club rugby in, in the UK and South Africa. Yeah, I mean, I think they're, 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 they're tr their rugby championship team is fully based overseas, you know, so yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're fully professional and they're a lot better than they were. And then, of course, New Zealand against England, which uh, probably showed their merit a little bit more. Um, New Zealand beating England 17-14. Uh, Paulie, would you have expected a, a, a different result there? New Zealand still a class effort. Yeah, New Zealand to, to have come back to beat England in a third and fourth playoff after that semi-final. Uh, testament to their, to, to their quality. I mean, Fiji, yeah. Fiji gave them a proper hiding. Um, then well, to come back and beat a decent England team was, was great for them. No, okay, so let's, let's move on to the final game then. And it was South Africa against Fiji in the final game. And South Africa played... I wouldn't, I wouldn't honestly think... I don't think South Africa played the best sevens um, uh, that, that I've seen you guys play. I've seen you guys play some, some fantastic, almost scientific rugby. And, and uh, maybe it's got to do with the fact that there's a new coach. There's a little bit of a change there. Um, but when it came to that final match, uh, really, Fiji just dominated. Yeah, I think it's tough. You know, when you, w when you get Fiji on, on a day like that, I think the last time I personally I've seen them play like that was two years ago. Um, and they also, they blew, they won the Gold Coast tournament. They gave us 30 points in the semis and they gave New Zealand 40 points in the final. And yeah, I could, uh, like I said, I, th I, th I think the guys did, did, did very, very well. But to contain a Fiji side like that, um, very, very tough. Could you see it? I mean, could you, the minute they took the field, are you telling me that you could see, hang on, this team, or, or was it during the tournament you already knew Fiji, they're on top of their game? I think especially the semi-final, Jeffs. Um, and, and, and sevens, you know, Paul True had been chatting about it for years, Neil Powell chats about it, momentum. And if the guys can beat New Zealand 44-0 in a semi-final, you just, you're coming off such a high, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's so tough. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll always back our boys. Again, the, the final was 50-50. That's when you, when you get to the knockout stages, it's, it's, it's always 50-50. But I think Fiji were just on cloud nine. You know, things were happening. They were throwing back flick passes, through the leg passes, overhead passes, and everything was just going to hand. Um, Rita, you, I haven't seen you do too many back flick passes and, and through the leg passes in, in, your, in your sevens days. No, JP, unfortunately, I never played seven. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I preferred the close contact. Uh, Did you want to? The line out. Did you want uh, to? At, at six foot nine or whatever <laughs> the <you're at> <laughs> No, I wasn't really interested in that. Uh, but I do enjoy watching it, uh, seeing the guys utilizing space and... All when you're coaching, do you do you when you when you're coaching the guys and you talk about utilizing space, is, is that something that you you coach the guys? You're coaching at Primrose now. Um, is is that something that you look for? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you have to take into consideration that the field is you know over 50 meters wide, and you only have about uh, 30 guys on the field. You definitely have to utilize those gaps in between and the extra skill side stepping and all that. And we sort of need to move away from, you know, playing copper stamp, uh, running into brick walls. There's so much space on the field, it needs to be utilized. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Folks, uh, we're of course going to take a look at the Varsity Sevens that happened at Camps Bay in a couple of seconds as well. We'll take a look at the results then. You would know then that it was very exciting out at uh, Camps Bay and uh, the volleyball from Varsity Sports as well uh, taking place there. So lots of Sevens happening at the same time. Um, and of course, the George um, or PE sevens coming up as well. We'll take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the other rugby action in and around Cape Town and uh, possibly international. Welcome back, everybody. Cape Rugby TV, Wednesday night, nine o'clock, and of course, we bring you the very best of rugby in and around Cape Town. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. We're proud to say that uh, Cape Town TV. During the month of November, managed to hit the fantastic numbers of 2.4 million viewers. I was hoping for 2.5, but we're up to 2.4 million viewers around the country now. So we're very happy to say that finally Cape Town TV has really gone through the roof. So uh, make sure that you keep watching as we bring rugby to not only the folks in and around Cape Town, but also the rest of the country. 
which means we've got to start getting your comments from uh, all over the country to find out what it is that you like about Cape Town rugby. We know that when we watch uh, rugby at Loftus, we watch rugby at Kings Park or Ellis Park, we see more Western Province rugby jerseys than any other team. So we know that most of the supporters are actually probably up there. So there's no problem with you watching the show every week and making sure that you, you support uh, a, a winning team. <laughs> anyway, moving back then to, to rugby in and around Cape Town, it was the Varsity Sevens at, uh, at, uh, at uh, Camps Bay over the weekend. Let's take a look at some of the results there. Marty's 22-17 over Coffsies. That was in the cup final, so it was victory for them. UJ going down to Pucket, third and fourth place playoff there. And then in the plate final, it was UWC against Pucket, 20 points to 10. And in the bowl final, UCT 27-12 against NMMU. And there you see the picture of the champions, the Varsity champions, who uh, walked away with it there, Stellenbosch University. And, uh, of course, uh, the individual awards there. FNB player of the tournament went to Freddie Miller, who is no stranger to uh, rugby, or at least the Cape Rugby TV show. We've managed to, to speak to him in the man of the matches a number of times. The Celsi most tries of the tournament went to Leon Potkita from UJ, Samsung Super Try to Zane Janssen van Rensburg, also from UJ, and uh, Steers, uh, most valuable player, to Josh Bassing Thwaite from Marty's. So those are your top players in and around the uh, Varsity Sevens, and it really was classic. But let's look at some of the performances there. Paulie, the Cape Rugby TV side, we didn't play against Marty's, uh, or did we? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. But um, you, they're, they're, they're a good outfit. They train yeah. very hard. I watched them on the side of the field. They were clearly doing, doing that Super 7s at Villages. They were preparing for bigger things. Yeah, they have. They've, they've put quite a bit of emphasis on their 7s. You know, Miyagi, uh, Miyagi's done very well uh, coaching the side. And then they've got Grant Van Falden, the vision specialist, who's, uh, who's actually got involved there. Uh, and they've, they've got a very professional outfit. So very, 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 very glad for them. Uh, they, they do put quite a bit of work in. Uh, and we often play against them in preparation for, for the HSBC 7 Series. We often play against them quite, quite often. Now, I don't know if you watched how much of the, the Varsity 7s that you watched, but um, UWC played against Pucker in, in the plate final. They got this thing called the power play, which is like a one minute power play. And, and if you score any tries during that time, it's five minutes, it's, it's double your, your points. So they come up with a lot of innovative stuff. Rita, what do you make of that in terms of the innovation of, of uh, I mean, we saw it in the Varsity Cup as well. There's that player that rocks, period. There's that three minutes. Uh, how do you feel about that from an entertainment perspective? Well, I think it does, um, you know, help the game a little bit, you know, gets the um, spectators more excited about watching the game. You know, maybe not in the bigger games, you, I don't think you would want to tamper with the rules and adding smaller things like when it comes to uh, club and, mm. and, and provincial rugby. But in terms of uh, seven aside, varsity cup, you can tamper with the rules a bit and see if you can bring more excitement. Yeah, yeah. Dobbo, you've, you've won the Varsity Cup, I think, seven or eight times consecutively <laughs> now. Um, when you were playing the Varsity Cup, uh, there's all these gimmicks in the Varsity yeah. Cup. There's the power play, and then yeah. there's the, the player that rocks period, and then there's the, you know, there's lots of things that are clearly built for entertainment. And you, you went to the Varsity Cup, and you, you do really successfully there, and of course the players have got to think about all these different dimensions. And then you come into the league. When you were coaching the Varsity side at UCT, and, and you had tremendous success there. Was that a disruptive process or did it benefit or how did you, uh, how did you find the, the, the balance? Yeah, we, we really, really struggled tr transitioning to league, you know, you know, from the, you're right, gimmicky elements of Varsity Cup where I think they sometimes tried too hard to be gimmicky and then you get down to some real rugby where you're going out to Durbel or uh, Tigerberg on a Friday night, you know, and that's a completely, it's almost, it's almost a different game and we used to, particularly, you know, Marty's got much more depth and they sort of handled a bit of it. Varsity, you know, we come against a harder barter. I remember we once played the final, lost Stellenbosch in extra or in the last second on the Monday, and the Friday night we played Durbo in a league, and we thought we were the best. You know, we, we you know, we, yeah. and we got absolutely smacked. You know, so, so there's a big difference. Yeah, uh, there's a big, and it's not. Most people mustn't say the Varsity Cup's a much higher level. It's fast, it's dry, it's gimmicky, it's it's catchy, and, and it's in a different time of the year. But the league is tough. Different, you know, it's different, 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 just different. Yeah. So how do you? What do you do? How, what do you do to make that mental adjustment? I mean, you're literally yeah. going from one week. Yeah. Uh, there's no gaps. There's no, no training transition time. You're, you're going from one style of rugby yeah. into another style. How no, we, no we, really, we battled. I mean, you still have always 
they got it right a couple of years ago, but um, no, we, we, we just struggled. We just lost. I think, um, you know, the, the guys get a bit, they're young and they get excited by the big crowds and everything, but I don't think many of those people are there for the rugby. <laughs> no, they're clearly there for the, they're clearly there for the, um, for the, what, what do you, uh, for the, yeah, for the, uh, for the courts. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the other thing that I have to ask you is, I mean, um, uh, so it's a bit of a myth then. People say, oh, well, they've just come out of the Varsity Cup, so they've had two months worth of preparation and planning. They're going to be really ready for league. Uh, it's a, that's a bit of a myth. No, uh, I not? think it's, you know, the league, uh, no, I think that they struggle. I think they've been st they've started too early because they're starting in like September, October, straight off of the previous league. So the guys aren't really properly rested. And then it's just, you know, anticlimactic because you've either, you know, if you've won the Varsity Cup, which doesn't happen often to UCT, it's anticlimactic. If you've lost the Varsity Cup, then it's hard. Now you've got to pick yourself up to go to, out to Durban. You know, so it is, so no, I think, but I think the league is very good for them because it teaches them some of the hard truths about rugby, you know. One of the strengths that, 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 that you have is this incredible ability to inspire the players. I've heard you do quote <laughs> Shakespeare in the change room and, and stuff. Is that one of your tools that, that you, that you, you maybe recommend to coaches? We, when we were out over the weekend, we, we also found out that coaches talk too much. Yeah, we talk too much. We, we self-indulge. But uh, um, I did Shakespeare before the under-21 final. It was from Henry V, which you know well, James. It's the, yes, we course. few, we happy few, we yeah. band of brothers. For he who sheds his bread today shall be my brother. But I just think if I get Crispian. the player... Crispian. That's exactly. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Paul, you knew that, Crispian. yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Crispin's there. You did right. Um, that, uh, you know, I just try and get the guys to think beyond rugby sometimes and stimulate them. So if I can make them really tight as a group. Mm. So the Shakespeare thing's half a laugh because I've got Etienne Swanepoel repeating that. Well, it is if Danny DeVito's doing it. <laughs> 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 I just try and make the team tight and think and, and I'd be happy. That's what yeah. I mean. Well, I, th I think it's absolutely amazing. Paulie, does that make a difference for you guys when you're on the side of the field when you've got a coach who's not talking too much about rugby and he's just trying to inspire? Yeah, definitely. I think Dobbo, Dobbo definitely hit the nail on the head. It's, 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 great. it's great as a player to feel empowered when the coach actually trusts you. You know, you, you've, you've, you've done the work behind the scenes, you've trained hard, you've done the, the research you needed to do, the planning you needed to do, and once, you've, once you're on the field, it's great if the coach is just giving you, you know, he's seen one or two things that you haven't been able to see because he's seeing it from a different perspective. Yeah. And just to help you out instead of saying, yeah, you guys, you aren't doing this, you need to do that, do that. Just help the guys along because at the end of the day, the, the guys on the field are the guys doing the business. When you say and I've been in that position coaching sides there's nothing you can do once the guys have taken the field it's great to take a step back and, yeah. and, and, and let them do their thing and Rito um, I mean I, I, the first time I met you was at the, at the Vodacom you were playing the Vodacom Cup with Stanley Robinheim and you played there for a while and then of course you went to the Griffins during your time are there memorable times that you can think back as a coach because now you're the, you're the coach now you're the, the, fl on the, the, the shoes on the other foot so to speak um, are there moments that you think back to your career that it was the coach's words that made the difference? Yeah, there's uh, definitely plenty of times when that happened. I remember at one stage, he used to play clips uh, before the game of, you know, of how we played during the season, you know, take out the best clip of a guy, you know, making meters, making the tackles, you know, and adding words into that definitely made a difference. Side job made you believe in yourself a bit more. Made so a huge difference, yeah. It is important, yeah. yeah. All right, folks, uh, in a couple of minutes' time, we'll take a look at the coaching clinic that uh, uh, happened at uh, the Institute over the weekend. But uh, more importantly, um, last week, it was the Kitty's Christmas party at the High Performance Center at um, Belleville, Well, of course, is the home ground of uh, Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. And as usual, the Western Province Rugby Union went out there together with some of the professional players and took some kids from the previously disadvantaged areas just to have a little bit of a taste of a Christmas party. Discovery came on board as usual. Western Promise Rugby came on board and a, a couple of kids managed to have something a little bit different from their usual terrible time at home. Many of them from orphanages, which in some cases is even worse. Let's catch up with the guys as uh, we show you this uh, once again incredible occasion. Now we are here today at the annual party that Western Province arranges for children of you know, the less privileged. And we have 10 different homes here. And these kids come from all over the peninsula. And they simply love being here. Uh, they get uh, to eat, they get to play with the senior players, they get to mix with everybody. And on top of it, Father Christmas will come here just now and give them all presents. So it's a fantastic initiative going on for a few years and we hope it will continue because these children, they have nobody else to turn to and Mr. Province is fortunate enough 
where they can assist them and make a better Christmas for them. It's nice to be here today. We've got a few Western Province girls here to help. Uh, we've been in a lot of costumes, all of them are entertaining the kids. It was a great day and it's something nice that Western Province do for the community. It's all walks of life here, all different areas, so it covers the whole of Western Cape. Nice to be part of it. Um, I hope we can keep up with this initiative every year and grow with bigger every year. So people out, out there that's got sponsors to get involved in Western Province Rugby for this initiative, um, get your name out there and come get, get involved. Good morning, we are at the Coca-Cola Disadvantage, uh, kids spending the day with them and uh, it's really nice and uh, cheering the day with them and to spend some time with them. It's not every day where they can uh, spend time with their own models and it makes you think about, back about my days, you know, looking up to guys like John de Jong, Theo uh, Aplon, Rana Banner, so, so it's something special now and it reminds me about back in the day. Uh, please say that it's very tough for the moment. We have to start with the kids and kids. We have to start with the kids. We have to start with the kids. We have to start with the kids. It's my first time, really. It's a good privilege and honor to be with my role models. As Nemo said, you know, growing up, you always wanted to be in the squad. and It was one of the goals that you wanted to achieve. So it's good. I just need to make the uh, most of the opportunity. And it's a great, great day for us. It's so nice to have all these um, disadvantaged children here, and it's fantastic to see what the staff of Western Province has done. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic that we came out here. 10, 15 years was Oscar and Rizko. And I think that we came out here and gave them a chance to give them a chance. But I think that we came out here and gave them a chance to give them a chance. And I think that we came out here and gave them a chance to give them a chance. And I think that we came out here and gave them a chance. Once again, a credible showing there at um, the High Performance Center. Um, and uh, a lot of kids out there at the moment uh, really struggling. And hopefully, some of the kids out there are actually watching Cape Rugby TV tonight and might have seen their, their faces on there. Paul, you've done a fair amount of uh, getting out there to the community, um, doing things. How does it feel when you, as a Springbok player, go out and see some of the kids that are? Uh, maybe ordinarily don't have this kind of experience. No, oh, Japs, it's absolutely wonderful. You know, anything, anything we can do, and I think you, you alluded to it earlier, anything we can do to just make, just make their Christmas experience better. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, us, us Habs, we take a lot of things for granted. And for, and for the guys, I mean, the guys are great about it. You saw Joan and Noche and, and, and the guys out there. It's, it, 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 it takes nothing from us to spend a couple of hours with, with, uh, with, with kids who, who actually hero worship the guys. Uh, you know, we, we all had heroes when we were young, and it's great. It was great to spend time with them. And it's 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 nice to see from a, from a from a, a club rugby point of view that that there are some professional players out there who actually do take it seriously, and they're not just playing at lip service. They're paying at lip service. That is, they they're actually kind of making an effort. They can relate to the scenario, yeah. you know, because we do have a lot of professional players out there who just take it as part of the job. Um, you know, go through the motions and, and move on. But there is more depth to it. I don't know, John, uh, you're, 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 you're quite exposed to the space. I know it's a very professional era at the moment. The guys have got hectic schedules and they probably get pulled in all sorts of directions. Yeah. But you do want people that are still going to have a bit of humanity. Yeah, I think generally I've actually been pleasantly surprised. I think they'd be worse. I mean, a guy like Brian Abana was extraordinary. I and mean, he didn't need anybody or anything or yeah. money. Or, and he would always... Because the guys come and they hang on the HPC after training and, you know, you always see the guys, they one or two guys will drive past in fast cars, but most of the guys stop and chat, which is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Brian was one of those guys that just came naturally to him. Yeah, and yeah. That's, uh, I mean, that, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, Rita, you guys, from a Primrose point of view, you've got an incredible structure there. I think you've got, what, like 600 kids in the youth structure? Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the youth structure at Primrose. Yeah, well, I know um, we've got teams starting from under eight and it moves all the way up to seniors. Um, it, it's pretty amazing if you go there on a Monday, Wednesday night to see how many youngsters are out there training. Whether it's raining, they still come through yeah. and work really hard. I must, I must say, I've, I've been super impressed with, with the guys at Primrose over the, over the years that have built that structure for the kids who don't have uh, fields to play on, who would then play within the Primrose youth structure and then, and then play as a club against other schools. So. Uh, my hat's off to the guys at Primrose. You guys have done an incredible job, and I hope to see that you that you continue that. So, you as a senior coach, do you do you kind of like rub shoulders with the with the kiddies? 
Yeah, now and then. Uh, I mean, some of the first team players coach the junior team, so they do ask me to come down right, and right. help a bit with lineouts then some scrums. So you actually got some of the, the, the guys in your first team squad who, who coach ba and put back into the community? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's something you want to you want to push as much as you can, Dabba? Yeah. <laughs> when you have time. <laughs> no, I think, I think that's probably one of the holes that we've got. Was, I think... That's one area we could probably contribute more as a professional arm is going back into to do actual coaching like that, you know, mm. beyond just our, ourselves, you know. But you know, we 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 were, I kind of whispered in your ear um, uh, on the weekend. We're fixing it with communication, um, and maybe that sounds a little bit scientific, but there was a lot of questions from the coaches at the the seminar over the weekend that there's a gap between professional rugby and amateur rugby. But I think what people aren't realizing is that uh, yes, there might be in terms of playing. But in terms of uh, uniting under the dizer, we've, we're closing that gap. We spoke about this a number of times, and this, this new media process has, ch has changed that. We've got, ha the instruction being given, because a lot of the coaches don't go to the AGMs or the general council no. meetings, and they don't know that the, the instruction has come out that, that we want all teams to be community friendly. Yeah. So the gap has been bridged between, yeah. I mean, in a way, uh, to have you on the show, uh, um, or a, a Jean de Villiers on the show, um, or a poorly on the show. In many cases, uh, our audience would never have had an opportunity to kind of hear you, talk to you, and now they get a chance to see you, and that does close the gap. Yeah, I think the, the growth and profession of club rugby like that, I don't mean professionalism in terms of paying, I mean in terms of like, the media strategy, the communications, the, um, the webs, the Twitter stuff, and we all follow it now, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's shortened the gap dramatically. And when I say there's a gap between professional and amateur rugby, it's largely due to the fact the guys are working and can't really train as much, but from you know, going to that thing where you at the weekend, that coaching team, the, the level of coaching there is, is very high. Those club coaches are bright and yeah. you know, the whole thing is very well run and communicated and highly prop and properly coached. Speaking about the club coaching, um, is there a risk of us as professional coaches, you guys, is there a risk? You guys have come out with some serious statistics. I mean, yeah. you, you're training seven days a week. You're looking at videos, you're looking at statistics, you're analyzing the game. It's very strategic. But then we have club coaches yeah. who train maybe twice a week yeah. maybe if you're a Hamilton's or a Marty's maybe yeah. you do three times a week but they have generally twice a week the yeah. players rush there they rush yeah. back is there a danger of us coaching TV rugby to club coaches and it not connecting uh, I think those club coaches like I, I don't know I know I deal with a lot of them work incredibly hard so you always think that we because we're professional we work seven days we know so much more but I chat to a young Lopes or Anton Moorman or whoever it is or Rito here that they actually They've worked. They've gone home from work. They've gone to practice, and they've worked from eight to twelve, analyzing, you know, the Primrose lineouts. Yeah, you know, yeah. so the guys are, are much more advanced than I give them credit for. So I think that they're coaching good, practical, pro proper rugby. I think the different, the, the the key difference to me is that the players, unfortunately, are working eight to five, and our players are in the gym and on the field. You know, and that makes that gap a bit big. Do you feel comfortable then to say to the naysayers of the world that club rugby is not dead? <laughs> In the Western Cape, it's incredible. And because, uh, I mean, that, that's what I've had to listen to around the Briar Fires for many years. Yeah, but James, it's credit, I'm not being sycophantic, it's credit to guys like you who took a view, because 10 years ago when I was coaching club rugby, it wasn't the same condition in terms of profile, professionalism, organization, yeah. communication. And the last 10 years, I mean, it's just revolutionized, you know, and yeah. we, I think we've come to be, I mean, if you want to try and look up a result from the Northern, from, from the Blue Bulls, or you want to try and, you can't. So we, we are setting the pace here, definitely, yeah, and credit to you guys and the union there. <laughs> So Rita, how much, let's take it to you then, back to ground level on, uh, in, the, in, the, in the club space. How scientific do you get at club level? Uh, John, I was just talking about analyzing lineouts and, and so forth. When you go back home, do you, do you spend the time watching the videos? Uh, I mean, you're obviously talking in the same uh, kind of experience as other club coaches. Yes, absolutely, James. I mean, there's um, guys coming out with video cameras. Stats Pro comes out and records your games and codes the games for you you do have to spend a lot of time analyzing the opposition. I mean, it gives you an upper hand, gives you a better understanding of who you're gonna play against. You do have to go back and give your players their stats. They need to know how much tackles they're making, uh, how much lineups they, 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 they're winning in a game. And those things all count. If you can prepare and show the guys what they're getting right and wrong, it makes a huge difference. So we go back to then to what, if one wants to think of it almost as transference or transferability, whatever the, the phrase is, I'll, I'll, I'll 
pass it over to my <laughs> you know more. Shakespearean <laughs> colleague. You know more. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got a player who's yeah. looked at, you've shown him the video, and he sees, heck, heck I could have, uh, in this case, broken right, uh, and, and the next time that there's three players, you know, you've got a, a set move, and now you've planned the move. How hard is it to talk about it from video, then do it on the field, on practice, and then find the time, or find the time in practice, and then still transfer it into match day? Well, I think the key is um, getting feedback from the player, first of all, you know, showing the guy the video and asking him what he did wrong or right. And once he ad identifies what he's done wrong, it's so much easier for him to adjust himself without you, the coach, having to push hard on it. Paulie, let's go to you. We have, however, seen that a certain sevens team can perform successfully without ha even having met each other if they get game time. <laughs> yeah, Jess, uh, yeah, we, were, we, we were very lucky. The, the, the team that you put together, all quality players. And again, I mean, I think we were, the four of us were chatting about it before we, before we went on air. Sevens and fifteens are completely different games. You can't teach someone how to play sevens in three months. Uh, so you're not going to teach someone how to, how to how to play sevens in a, a couple of hours. Yeah. So I think that, that day we were just we were very lucky, um, and we had very. I mean, the, the guys are well conditioned. The guys are the guys' skill sets are were incredible. Um, but you were getting us you through. were getting better. I mean, we lost what I think we lost the second game, mm. maybe won the first game. But what, 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 what I noticed was that as you guys were playing during the day, you were getting better during the day. Yeah, Jeffs, and again, I mean, I think you can, you can chat to Dobber and and, and Shangan that. The, the hardest thing as a co as a coach is Rito, to that would be is you. to is to <laughs> is to actually coach um, uh, awareness. Um, yeah. That's the that's the hardest thing. And I think that the ideas that you that you put in the guy's head once they've actually done it on the field and they've got experience, they can they can see. Okay, if I did that in that scenario, that that would that would then work. Uh, so that's why it gets easier. You know, we always say on the circuit. The, in, in terms of sevens, your first game is always the hardest because you're going to blow a bit. Your body's not really up for it yet, yeah. and and I think that's why it, it, it always takes a bit of time to get to, to get going. All right, so folks, it was the uh, coaches, the West Bromwich Rugby coaches, getting out over the weekend to the West Bromwich Rugby Institute in Stellenbosch, uh, with Jerome part of to put together a, a very powerful sem seminar there with uh, John Dobson. Um, uh, and, and, and other people like. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, no, no. Greg Hechter, Stefan de Twee. Um, there was a Nam Davi, Davi Snema, yeah. out there. So, really, some, all your top guys were out there. Let's catch up with them anyway. You don't need to hear me telling you about it. See what happened there. If I was in your position as a club coach, which I was for a long time, I was saying, scrap it, and you may still think that, but I think the converse actually applies. This is the one way of getting club guys through into, 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 the, into Belleville, you know what I mean, HBC. That's the door to break down. There's a structure going in. Um, there are guys coming through, and it's, it's not that, that easy to come through because there are contracted guys who need to be looked at, but the guys are working out now. We, now the guys are in the gym from last year or this year, we can give the guys supplements because we want to give the guys the same opportunity as the guy who's training as a professional. So we look at a lot of kids. The brand that you've got on your, on your jersey there, it's, what, it's exactly what you said when it was for you. For these guys, it's big. When you show them the visa, it's big. We were talking about talent confirmation, that uh, the two competitions, that uh, the Vodacom Cup, that we want to get guys to get, to, to get as many club players and have a look at their talent and see if, you know, if Jerome recommends it, that these guys are actually up to it to get them every opportunity to compete and confirm that they're all the talented guys that Jerome says. And then on the under-21 level, it's the sort of guys coming through the Western province system. We want to just check that these guys are ready to go for the next level because our job is really to produce players for Curry Cup and Super Rugby. But at the same time, we want to make sure that, um, you know, most players outside the sort of recognised system have got to be given the opportunity and as well as driving the sort of transformation um, uh, requirements of the senior team that we must ensure that we are bringing through really talented players of all colours. That in the bouw binnen a oefen sessie and for all for ons wat limit is met tijd hoe sal jy hoe sal jy aanbeveel om dit te doen? 
asking about um, why can't yeah the, the gap between club rugby and and, and uh, professional arm. Now obviously we're trying to bridge it, but the guys are saying you know why can't uh, a uh, store guy ever played club rugby, what that would mean for club rugby, or if a guy's coming back from injury, why can't he play for the club? And I think it's a, yeah, that's a good point because he, he says, you know, as Louis Blom said, the, the guy who played 50 years, uh, Jean de Villiers playing one game for Martins would give, mean a lot to sort of 500 young rugby players. So yeah, it's true. We believe if we in our position off, then we need to attack. When we in our own off, we need to play it safe, we need to kick it back. You agree, you agree with me? If that's that same, and a lot of tries being scored from your own up. Why don't we spend more time on counter taking play from uh, uh, the Olympics? But ultimately, what I'm doing from, from my side, I'm assisting you and you're helping that individual also to grow in the way. So the club coaches got on to the Institute over the weekend. Uh, how long were they there? Uh, over three days, so Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday? Correct. It was very intense. It was an amazing initiative. Um, yeah. you know, the guys at the, the professional side were analyzed it this morning with Alistair, and they loved it. So they felt like a great barrier, barrier had been broken, which was brilliant. Do you think it's going to help? Yes, definitely. And I think there's a follow-up one at the end of January now. I think it's revolution. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I mean, when I was there, I was really... I was quite blown away by, yeah. by first of all, you know, I've, I've seen you guys do presentations before and your stats is mind blowing. You yeah. know, you, everything's measured, percentages. And, and it was interesting to, 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 to watch like Nazim, for example, explain, as you would have seen in the clip there, saying, talking about um, t uh, tries from, from territory and how the perception is that we must only counter attack in your own uh, half. Yeah. But yet during the World Cup, uh, the stats show that 39% of tries were scored. And is this all because of turnover? Yeah, I mean, I think the whole strategy next year is to have how to play off turnover, whether it's um, turnover set piece, turnover in general play, quick throw-ins, taps, free kicks. But is that not is that not sort of does that not epitomise what Western Province running rugby has always been about? Yeah, yeah. that's I, it. Yeah, I agree. I think I think we're going to see. We started to see it in the Curry Cup, and I think we're going to see it even developing next year. The bad thing for w rugby, I think, was and I know this goes up country, was the Sharks winning that final because. Yeah, apparently, Brendan on their warm-ups on the on the Monday of the Curry Cup final, they're doing three on twos, and Brendan Fender walked on and said, "Why are you wasting? Why are you passing the ball? Because we're not going to pass it on Saturday." Oh, really? So it's a sorry that that kick and chase rugby won, but I think rugby is evolving beyond that. Because right? I've, I, I mean, I, I'm out of the club games every weekend, um, and the one thing that I can categorically tell you is that there's no defensive structure in the world that will work for you in Division Three against a club <laughs> that's in that's lying sevens on the log, because. It, it could go anywhere. Yeah. It's, it's almost like sevens rugby, but yeah. 15 guys. I mean, they, you cannot defend against excellent running rugby. The, the guys are so fast, they step to heavens. Yeah. Um, and, and it's like, I mean, I, it's, I kind of want us to find a way to bring that part of club rugby into professional rugby. Couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. 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 Anyway, folks, right, it is, of course, um, Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers, who keeps the Stormers and Western Province Rugby and the many other clubs out there fit and raring to go. So if you want to win for yourself a uh, Shaker 600, which uh, you would have seen uh, on the show uh, many times, and I'm not going to dismantle it. Suffice to say that it's a, a Shaker like that. And I could, of course, do the whole thing, you know, take it apart and put it all together again. And people have been asking me to actually do appearances now where I do that. <laughs> but I'm um, not going to do it. But if you want to win for yourself the Synergy Whey Protein, which is extremely high in protein, not like you will see certain adverts on TV that are, are claiming that 30% protein is high protein. This is proper high protein, um, and you don't have to put it in a bowl. You can actually put this in a shaker, and then you will have a shaker up there with your high protein and help you put on muscle. You need to put on muscle in the off-season. I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't talk much about nutrition during the, the coach's seminar there, because now you're yeah. off-season, pre-season, a little bit mixed up, and the one thing that I can tell you is that if you want to prepare yourself and your players for next year, you've got to about five months before the first game. In fact, you're probably going to start doing some pre-season stuff, Rito, am I right? That's correct. A couple yeah. of warm-up games and things like that. So you're running out of gym time and protein time yeah. to put on weight. Yeah, this is a perfect time for you to actually push hard and put in all the extra weight and get your nutrition going. Yeah. Is that important, you guys, Dobbo, to, to put on weight um, in the off-season? Yeah, because the guys lose so much, as Paul will know from sevens, you lose so much weight in the pre-season. So they need to pick up as much as they can, you know, yeah. because the running that happens in preseason they drop weight dramatically. I know? mean, if if you can put on five or six kilos yeah. in the off season, then when you when you start losing weight during the season, and if you find yourself halfway down the log, your lock isn't going to be five kilos lighter than you began at the beginning of the season. Absolutely. Yeah. 
That's so, why this is so important. Too. Yeah. All right, folks. So um, if you want to win for yourself the Synergy Whey Protein together with the Shaker 600, courtesy of Evox Advanced Nutrition, then just SMS the word Evox, which is, of course, the uh, official sports nutrition supplier to Western Brothers Rugby and the DHL Stormers, and tell us uh, their favorite product, which uh, you see on the screen right now. SMS your name and answer to 33280. Congratulations to last week's winner, Pedro April. Pedro walks away with the Synergy Whey Protein as well as the Shaker 600. That is on its way to you, Pedro. So congratulations, Pedro wins the Shaker 600. And uh, folks, this really is a world-class shaker. You need, to, you need to get this. You put everything in here. Uh, we'll take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll start wrapping up uh, uh, the show and moving towards some of, of the other results. Back in a sec. Welcome back, everybody. Cape Rugby TV, Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock. In case you uh, haven't managed to tell your friends, get out there and tell them because uh, Cape Rugby TV is the premier um, club rugby uh, show in terms of uh, Western Province and the Western Cape. So you make sure that you're watching us and we know that there's so many fans up country. Remember, tomorrow night, starting tomorrow night, the Cape Town TV telethon starts uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So you'll see me back here on air tomorrow with a bunch of celebrities from Western Province Rugby, uh, cricket, football, and some of the other sporting uh, disciplines uh, from Western Cape, right here, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock for the Cape Town TV Telethon. We want you to phone in and help us uh, uh, continue the support for um, Cape Town TV. So if you like Cape Rugby TV and you like, of course, we're right now, you'll see tomorrow night during the Al Jazeera period. If you like Al Jazeera and you like the other shows on Cape Town TV, then donate. Jump on board tomorrow night. It's going to be very exciting. We have a fantastic guest of panels. I'll be anchoring the show and, of course, uh, looking after the other shows during the course of the telethon. So every uh, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Monday, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Tell your friends. So I'll be back tomorrow night. That's the Cape Town TV telethon. Gentlemen, let's quickly turn our attention to one of the other exciting games that I saw over the weekend, which I thought was a really classic, uh, was the Barbarians match. Um, Paulie, we, if, in fact, if I looked at some of the, the club socks there, I think, uh, and I'm just not sure about Willy Ruiz, but uh, Skulk Berger and uh, Jean de Villiers were both wearing Marty's, and Willy Ruiz was wearing something, but I, and I'm convinced that it was Marty socks as yeah. well. But great to see those South African teams pl uh, players dominating the Barbies. Yeah, it was great. Uh, we, I think all, always wonderful to watch the Barbies play. Uh, that's the, I think that's the brand of rugby that makes all of us excited. And yeah, you have a try to Vili a Cape, uh, Cape Town boy. He's from Strand. Uh, so I think he, he played quite a, for Marty's for quite a few years. And well, there again, those could have been poor Roos socks as well. <laughs> <laughs> could yeah. have been. Could have been, yeah. But, but uh, Vili Ruru, I mean, he's, it's, I was listening to Andrew Barnes, the commentator, and they were just, um, um, Stuart Barnes. <laughs> and it was, of course, <laughs> on ETV. Um, <laughs> uh, Stuart Barnes, who used to play fly for, for England, uh, commentating the game. And they were really lauding the... I know he's a big South African fan, but they were praising the South African uh, performances. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was great. And I think fantastic to see someone like Jean, after this long season that he's had, still, still playing. I mean, Skulk Berger is incredible. To come back from what he's come back from, and to perform on the international stage like that. And then Philly, I mean, I know my missus gets upset because I can't sit still whenever he gets the ball. <laughs> um, so he's, he's just exciting. He's, he's the talent that we've un 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 unearthed this year in terms yeah. of Springbok rugby. Yeah. The thing that scared me the most is that uh, watching that watching that game against Fiji and is, is that um, we, we still haven't seen Scala uh, hit his straps 100% yet. And if he's doing that already in the Fiji game, Imagine what it's going to be like in the super f in the in the, in the in the super fifteen. <laughs> yeah, it's frightening. I mean, can you imagine? No. Yeah, yeah, unstoppable. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of just taking it easy and going through the motions, but uh, he's he's going to be classic. But if we look at the Barbarians game, it's got a lot long history, and and the stadium was sold out. Yeah, yeah, that's what the, I think. That's what that's what all of us want to see in terms of in international rugby, and just to, just to keep the whole the whole idea of the Barbars going. Um, every time it gets sold out, that's just guaranteed for the next year again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it was wonderful to see. Rita, from a Primrose point of view, where do you guys go from here? Have you started practicing? Yeah, the boys are working hard in the gym. You know, like we said earlier, it's the perfect time to put in a bit of muscle, get ready for Super League A next year. Of course, it's going to be slightly different now. You're playing against 15 other teams. How do you feel about that? Um, I think, you know, if anything, it's, it's going to be slightly easier because there'll be less games. Uh, but in terms of competitiveness, that might get a bit tougher playing against the likes of UCT, Martis. Then you get those Wednesday night games, Saturday, Wednesday. Uh, you know, that might be a bit tricky on the guys coming up from Super League B. Yeah. Mm. 
Might have to do a bit of adjusting there. Yeah. Probably the next uh, round of the sevens is coming up. Uh, any predictions? Yeah, definitely. The guys are the, the guys are playing at home. It's in PE on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and I think after the after the fantastic showing over the weekend, I think that the guys will really make a push to do to do really well. Um, again, Fiji will have a lot of confidence coming in. New Zealand won last year. They'll have a point to prove. Um, and then again, you said it, Jabs. All the all the dark horses. Kenya will have a point to prove. Paul True, Paul True and Vuyo bringing the guys to, to PE, they've, they, they've done really well, have fantastic structures. And then, yeah, the dark horses, like you said, France, France will be back, Australia will be back, Portugal will be back, Canada are looking good. So it's going to be an interesting week of rugby. And of course, uh, the place is going to be completely packed. Yeah, well, hopefully. Uh, I, know, I know the, the SRB marketing team have done, have, have done a hell of a lot in terms of getting people to the stadium and making it exciting. Uh, so hopefully it will go off really well. Dobbo, do you have any times that you get given a, a player's a player, a sevens player, and they uh, kind of say, right, here's a player, you've got to put him in the mix now, and he's a sevens guy. We we get a we get a we get a couple of guys from the sevens, you know, when uh, Paul used to, and I think Neil's going to lend out a couple of players, but those are guys that we actively, you know, actively want, like Totsum Bavani or Cheslin Colby or. I mean, I'd love Paulie in the Vodacom Cup next year. <laughs> yeah, I think he's outgrowing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but those guys, guys, you know, it's not like we get lumped with them. It's because yeah. we actually want them and we've made an arrangement with the Sevens guys. And they yeah. always bring a lot, you know. They bring so much in terms of breakdown and their appreciation of space and their skill levels. And of course, their What fitness. do you do, though, to migrate them from that mentality of Sevens onto 15? I make them run through tyres. Concrete <laughs> 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 barriers and things like that. No, but they... Those guys are they they they're, they're supreme athletes. I mean, I was saying to Paul before, I wouldn't want to see a sevens preseason. You know, they're so well conditioned. They don't struggle at all. You know, yeah. I mean, they might not suit them, and we don't. There's nobody who's going to come and help us with the mauling and that sort of thing. That tends to be backs, but they add a lot. You know? Yeah, yeah. What do you got? What are you guys now busy with uh, in terms of preseason? Yeah, we started last um, Monday. We started the 25th of November with, um, and it's, a, it's sort of up until the 20th, going late this year, until the 20th of December. One big squad, the Stormers and Vodacom Cup teams. And they just do, we just do, it's just conditioning. But half an hour's rugby a day, some fundamentals of kicking and passing and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, it's tough out there. They're running on the velodrome, they're running 1.6s all the time. So it's, it's full on at the moment. Yeah. What's, what's a 1.6 for the, for the layman? Well, the 1.6 is they've got to do, it's a, just a 1.6 uh, kilometer time trial. But it's, you know, we do it every second day, you know, it can, it can get quite grim and they, they have to improve every time. So I suggest to some guys, listen, don't go too fast to start with, but then they get clapped for being too, too for <laughs> <laughs> So, so you've got to manage it carefully, yeah. All right, Paulie, what, what, from a, from a, we, you guys talk about this bleep test. Mm. For the, explain it to us. Well, Jeff, so we used to, I think, we, we used to, back in the day, we used to do the bleep that would start. I mean, Rito knows it would start from zero and it starts very slowly. But what we've migrated to now, and I think uh, Dobbo and the guys, are, we do the modified bleep. So you start on, on shuttle 82 um, and you do two shuttles and then you rest for one. And our minimum at the sevens is you have to reach 200. Um, otherwise, otherwise you're not considered. And a shuttle is, of course, up and down. It's a it's a it's a 20 meter shuttle. 20 meter. So shuttle. so you you run two, rest one, and you go in the beep. So it's called the beep, and the beep gets faster and faster and faster. The further you so go. there's an actual bell that goes off. Yes, yeah. Right. A little yeah. alarm beep. bell. Yeah. Mm. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible, Terrible stuff. Absolutely horrible. Nice. Horrible. Is, horrible. Is that is that, <laughs> that the kind of thing that rugby players fear? The bleep test? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everybody's nodding their heads. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, the bleep test, we're not going to do it on the show now, but we are, of course, on the clock. Time for us to take an ad break. When we come back, we'll start wrapping it up. We'll be back with you in a sec. Hey everybody, Cab Rugby TV. Remember, tomorrow night the telethon starts. It's going to be live, and you'll be able to uh, call us in studio on 021 440 and speak to uh, some of the celebrities, the sporting celebrities on the show with me. So it's going to be live, and you'll be able to pose your questions. And of course, uh, we want all of you guys out there to tell your friends and help um, get us uh, sponsors and uh, donors to continue supporting this uh, non-profit organization, Cape Town TV, that it is that uh, is so kindly the um, platform for Cape Rugby TV. So, of course, uh, it is, of course, lots of rugby action still coming up. Um, the HSBC Sevens now moves to Port Elizabeth, so th that's going to be very, very exciting. But right now, everybody is in the pre-season phase. Um, Paulie, pre-season, what are the kind of stuff, in addition to some of the stuff we've spoken about, it's gymming, it's nutrition. Do, how much speed work do you do pre-season, or is it more off-season right now? Um, yeah, more... 
more off season right now, Jess. But again, you know, the the coaches Dobbo and Rito, you know, you have you have your conditioning coaches, your bioanalysis, and I know the, the guys will work through phases. And also, it's become so professional. Uh, people do different things. You know, if you if you're lacking in strength, you're on a strength program. If your strength is fine, you're lacking in power, you're on a power program. If you unfit, then you're on a then you're on a on a more conditioning program. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's fantastic. I think nowadays uh, your conditioning is looked at more more um, more ho holistically, uh, just to make you an, an all round better player. Uh, so I think different people will be doing different things but all of that all of that makes a big makes a big Dabba, how much from a coaching point of view do you do you split um you you're, you're the senior coach and then you yeah. got a forwards coach and a backline yeah. coach how much do you split the guys in terms of their body composition so to speak or their abilities or talents no we uh, i mean in the preseason now yeah, no when you get closer to coaching i mean how do you how do you work differently? Yeah, I mean, we, it, it's a challenge. I mean, that's why I've got respect for the club guys because they've got so little time. You know, we feel we've got no time because we have to put in a, a breakdown session, a, a, you know, a line-out session, a scrumming session, a kicking game session, an attack session, and a defense session. And we still do all the conditioning in the week. Yeah, so we feel yeah. we've got no time. So I don't know how the club guys do it. No, but we, we, broke, we just break into those units. So that's how we break it up. Um, you know, the guys like the Stormers, they've got a diff different attack coach to defense coach. At the Vatican Cup, we're a bit thinner. It's just me, Lapib, and Darby. So we sort of double up some departments. Yeah, what do you do, Rita? Yeah, look, it's, it's a bit tough to balance, um, but I'm more with the forwards. So you know the forwards. That's, that's the team. That's you know? your thing. <laughs> so we need as much time as, much time as we get. It's, it's a, as we can get. It's a bit difficult to manage, but, you know, with forwards, you have to do scrums, line outs compared to the backs, just passing and, you know. Do you have a forwards coach and a backline coach on your side as well? Well, or how do you guys operate at Promos? Yeah, I've, I'm the forwards coach. There's a backline coach and there's a coach that oversees uh, the two of us. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You excited about next year's season? Uh, Primrose had a bit of a rough ride this year, but, uh, you know, a class outfit. We saw them put 50 points on Village at the beginning of the year. I mean, I, my, I, I'm thinking Primrose is going to come through as one of the teams that are going to challenge quite hard. Yeah, we, we're looking to go up there and be competitive, you know. So the rest, you'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, uh, my word. You know, <laughs> if you, yeah, well, 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 professional coaches, folks, uh, all credit to you. And, of course, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 boys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys notice that non-committal uh, answer? Yeah. Oh, we're going to give it our best shot. <laughs> you know, most, uh, all credit to you. Yes, folks, Cape Rugby TV. Remember, find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. And remember, tomorrow night, the telethon starts 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Join me uh, during that time and you'll be able to chat to some uh, sporting celebrities and uh, tell your friends. Uh, find us on Twitter and on Facebook and we're looking for you to send in those donations. You can also SMS them in uh, or as I said earlier on, you can call 021-448-0448 for one of the call operators to take your call and transfer us through to the live studio. Polly, um, hopefully we'll see you back in the studio in the next couple of days. No, hopefully, Jeffs. Always a pleasure being here. If not on the telethon. Yeah, hopefully. Just uh, just give me a shot. You got my number? Yeah, I got your number, yeah. <laughs> Rita, thanks for joining us. Best of luck at Primrose. I think it's going to be exciting. We look forward to the next year's season. Thank you very much, uh, JP. Thanks for having I me. I must just tell you, I was one of, one of the very few players to people to be allowed into the change room at Primrose to watch the guys do Ruesa, which is the na <laughs> their anthem. So yeah. I'm, Primrose is very close to my heart in terms of how those players get together and they do the Rosa, the, am, an, the anthem at Primrose. So best of luck to the guys at Primrose. We wish you guys the best of luck. So lo good luck to you, Reed. Thanks, sir. And uh, Dabo, um, no rest for you for a while, huh? No, no, up until the 20th of December. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining yeah, us. Great pleasure. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah no, we look, we look forward to hearing more Shakespeare when you get back. <laughs> 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 there we go, everybody. Cape Rugby TV, as uh, you know it, uh, Wednesdays, 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you again next week, same time, same place. I'll see you tomorrow for the telethon. Have a great rugby evening and then a great rugby weekend. Bye-bye.